Why getting rich is a long-term game and we need to be patient with ourselves. Why don't I have a million dollar portfolio yet? So the first reason is that building wealth is a marathon, not a sprint. I think we've all heard that story from ages ago about the rabbit and the tortoise. So the rabbit is a really fast animal. They had a race with the tortoise and the rabbit thought that it was going to win because it's so much quicker. So the rabbit went really fast did about half of the race and then decided to take a nap because it knew that the tortoise was really slow. But slow and steady, the tortoise kept on powering through and actually ended up beating the rabbit. And the reason why I think this story applies to investing is that sometimes when we do make those fast sprints, perhaps we do invest in some speculative investments and we make 50% per year return, it might not necessarily be sustainable for the long term. And that's why even though I do have a couple of speculative investments, most of my investments are kind of a bit like the tortoise. They're slow and steady, but eventually that is what will hopefully make me rich over the long term. And the other reason why I think that this story really applies to investing and building wealth is because we need to make sure that we are building wealth in a sustainable way, like the tortoise. For example, if we are saving all of our money and depriving ourselves of things that really make us happy and bring us joy, it's not going to be sustainable in the long term because eventually we might just give up and we might think this is way too hard because we're saving a little bit too much money and we are depriving ourselves of things that will really make us happy. So that's why I think it's important to do it in a sustainable way. Perhaps just starting with a small savings goal each month and putting that towards your investments. And then as you see that you can start building wealth, perhaps you can start increasing it from there. Unfortunately, there's no such thing as get rich quick schemes. It's all about just building good sustainable habits which are embedded in your life and doing it consistently over the long term. For example, starting off with saving 20% of your income and then increasing as you find that this is easy for you. Or even just trying to go to the gym two times per week and then increasing as you see that you are hitting those goals. And by the way, I am in a different place at the moment. I'm currently on the Gold Coast. So if you are enjoying this video and a bit of a different backdrop, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to this channel for more videos about investing and personal finance. The second reason is I think that there are a lot of people online that tell us about their amazing returns of from 50 to 100%. 50 to 100% per year returns is probably not going to happen every single year. Even as we look at the greatest investors of our time, for example, Warren Buffett, his average return was 20% per year. And the average return of the stock market is from five to 10% per year. So I think it's important to be realistic with our goals and what we can achieve. And if we are making from five to 10% returns, I think that's amazing because those returns can really compound over time and investing is a long-term game. It's not going to make you rich overnight, but five to 10% compounded every single year for 40 years will make you a millionaire. And I think it's important to think really long-term when we are investing in things. The next reason is that time in the market really does beat timing the market. And that's why I do try to invest consistently every single month, no matter what the stock market is doing. The most important thing in my opinion is to just start investing as early as you can. The next reason is that some high risk investments can actually set you back years on your investing goals. But what I have realized is if we do invest 100% of our savings into those high risk investments, if they don't turn out the way that we hope they would, it could also set us back in time. And that's why Phil Town does say that the number one rule of investing is to not lose money. So if we are investing our money for the long term and we're not losing money, then we're actually following that rule pretty well. And that's why I think that boring investments are actually one of the best investments. And that's why I do like to invest most of my money into ETFs because while they won't give me the 50 to 100% per year returns, they won't drop by 50 to 100% either. So if you had $100 and you lost 10%, you would actually need an 11% return in order to make your money back and get back to $100. And that's why I think that boring investments are actually a bit underrated. And these are the investments that can really help us build long-term sustainable wealth. And I would love to know what you guys think. Do you prefer boring investments and passive investments like ETFs, or do you prefer the more exciting investments like 
some individual growth stocks and cryptocurrency. I personally have a bit of both, but 75% of my portfolio is in the boring investments. It just makes it easier for me to sleep at night as well, because I know that if I do check my portfolio, I'm not going to have some crazy drops every now and again, and I will be less prone to selling my investments. Do you guys check your portfolio often? Let me know down in the comments below. And finally, I think that we should try to stop comparing ourselves to other people. And I know that that's easier said than done, but there are so many other factors that we're just not taking into account that that other person may have had that we just don't really know about. I saw this post the other day and it was comparing these two people of the same age, one with a really high net worth, one with not a very high net worth. And it also compared their upbringing as well. These are all things that we just don't really consider, but our education, the way that we were brought up to see money, these things have huge impacts on our personal finances and the personal finances of people around us. So I think that it's important to not compare ourselves to other people, but rather compare ourselves to ourselves yesterday. If we are getting better with time and we are improving, so that's the reason why I think we should be patient with ourselves as we do build wealth over the long term. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like this video, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more videos about investing and personal finance. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. And if you'd like to see some more videos, I've got some links to some videos here. So make sure you click the links and click through to another video.